Hello, welcome. Today I will show you in this tutorial what is important when you want to use the render farm, the online render farm grid markets. And I have made a project to test all the functions to basically check out if there are problems maybe with this render farm. And I'm really surprised uh, with um, render man and grid markets in combination. And I will show you in this tutorial basically what I have made, how you can register on the grid markets page, the entire process of uploading your first project. And yeah, um, for the project, I basically created a scene, um, a very, well, a very old idea I had and the current um, worldwide situation maybe forced me to do this project and it's basically a project where I have rendered a really big amount of layers on grid markets on the render farm uh, with renderman 23.2 and the nice thing about grid markets is that it really works out of the box with random man. The support is really kind and they will help you to get the latest version. They will install it for you. In my case, this took less than 24 hours. Yeah, um, in this project, I also used a function called LPE, which is basically an expression language for dealing with AUVs and multiple um, beauty pass outputs within one render operation. So you basically have only one render uh, run and get a multiple or a big amount of different um, AUVs. And in my case, I really needed a lot of them. So I made a separate AOV only for the bench, for the stone or pavement breakups, the ground, and other stuff like um, the ground reflections, unoccluded ground reflections, the shadows which are inverted, and so on. A lot of stuff um, like reflections and sh shading. This is really a big amount of of layers um, which were mostly outputted in one go. Uh, in the end, um, till this section, all passes on the left side were outputted in one go. Uh, this was the se second iteration for adding more detail. And here was the third iteration to add a, another um, layer of detail to this, to this shot. I also used a, a crypto mat and as you can see I really um yeah I get everything basically from one file which is called treefun this was the original working title treefun AOVs all those layers have the same origin basically um what I also did right here is I use the the um the render man denoiser in the first place um but i made a little mistake in the first place so rendering everything to one exr file can slow down the denoising process because the render man denoiser had to go through each file and have to load the entire file even when you only need a section or a sublayer of it so uh, I needed to find a solution and my solution was to denoise everything in post uh, in Fusion Studio, which was possible with repair frame and tween function. I already showed this process on the render man for Houdini Discord. It really works and it yeah, gave similar results like the render man denoiser, uh, has some disadvantages in some uh, aspect in some cases so with that process you lose the first and the last frame of your sequence um, but yeah it it also works so yeah this is basically um, the denoising part of it so don't wonder 
and then I everything uh, I wrote everything out to to separate layers um, which are compressed to um, yeah which are compressed <laughs> right here to DWA compression basically for the non data passes all the data passes are compressed to zips yeah, zip files and yeah grid markets was really a big help into achieving that goal the entire process took about two months three weeks almost three weeks for compositing and I really cannot imagine to not use grid marks in the next process because this entire rendering of those 40 plus AUVs and layers took a, had an average render time of about 19 minutes per frame. This is really, really fast when you, when you think about the amount of data that you produce. Uh, on my machine, the render time was something about 30 minutes uh, uh, per frame. Grid markets um, is able to render five images at the same time. And the scene itself is, is really, really big. So uh, I will show you now how you can basically get started with grid markets and Houdini and RenderMan. So let us dive in. So here we are. This is the website of Grid Markets. So you can access this website. Uh, I will also link it in the description uh, with gridmarkets.com. And the first thing that you will see is this. And basically, you have you basically see what services they have, like um, you can render with Houdini. Cinema 4D and all those other two other tools. They have currently um, a beta for the Nuke uh, rendering um, application. So you basically can use grid markets with Nuke in combination. And they have also a free trial, which is quite interesting. So you basically can sign up and can test a fair amount of frames for yourself in the first place without having any costs so you can check the entire process and this is really straightforward i've never have seen a render farm working that nicely also in combination to houdini i mean we know that houdini has some difficulties accessing render farms and grid markets is really an option yeah basically you should sign up then you can test for 14 days or like written in the description right here. And when you have done that, you can basically log into a sub web page called the portal. And in the portal, you can see your render farm manager, render manager to the getting started page in the first place. And there you have basically the access to those plugins. And what we need for starting here is the Houdini plugin. And here you can see also an overview of the other tools, some testimonials and so on. Some very quick, um, some very quick um, tutorials for major functions, really quick tutorials. And yeah, it's quite easy. You basically download the HDA to the folder of your, what you like. You download it and then you basically have those um, plugins. You have also example files. And the only thing that you need to do is to drop those into your OTL folder. That's your Houdini user folder where also where you also have the Houdini environment file and so on. And 
This is basically how you install it. Then you restart Houdini and then it should run. The next thing, before we do that, the next thing that, that is really important, you also need the so-called Grid Markets Envoy. And for Ubuntu and also for Linux Mint, you have to do some stuff in the first place so that the firewall is not blocking that. And yeah, I work in Linux, so I will download the Linux version. And we'll also download that. Okay, I have it already. Exchange. It's a bit larger. The Grid Markets Envoy is basically a manager for your computer. So when you have a job running on the farm, the Grid Markets Envoy enables you to basically download the finished render images in the background. So when you have free capacity uh, in your network, the Envoy will download the finished um, images to the to your project files, to to the file directories that you have defined in your project itself. So this is this is really nice. But when you need the um, the network speed. Maybe you will work uh, on the pro further on the project and you need the web space for doing other stuff, maybe research or whatever. You uh, should um, stop the, the background process um, that will, will be started with Envoy. So keep that in mind. You have the choice for that. And yeah, so... I will install it and I will show you what you need to do next. So here we are. The next step that you need to do is when you have installed the Grid Markets Envoy, you can download the file and zip it into the folder wherever you want. So at least on Linux, I, ca I can only speak about Linux, but this is my experience. And here you have the the downloaded folder and the content of it and here you basically start the envoy. I already did that and when you have installed the uh, grid markets envoy, uh, envoy correctly you will see this line no project. This is because you don't have uploaded anything. We will upload my bird and for that we have to consider some stuff. First of all we need to make sure that the scene is set up for the rendering on the server. Uh, that means in the random man Rob, we have to make sure that we have chosen the open EXR or deep EXR option. And in that also the compression. Then if we want to use the denoiser, of course, and our output path, we call it task and maybe bird turntable task. Those um, folders will be created automatically. We also have to check if we have some display filters like the crypto mat. And yeah, what I also found out as a little side tip for dealing with better denoising result, results is to put an expression into the sample offset. So in the current build 23.3 of Renderman, you should um, basically put that line into it that you don't have any static noise anymore. And because of that, the cross-frame denoiser will work much better. So if you have static noise, use those expressions in the sample offset. It will basically randomize the sample value for each frame. So yeah, but the next thing that we need to consider is to use the grid markets um, COVID relief um, um, funding. So since uh, we have to deal with this crisis worldwide, you get a 30% discount on the rendering service of grid markets. 
which is the relief program. And here is a video sorting. And for that, you basically have to register your project when you want to render it, in which time frame. Keep in mind, this is only working uh, until 30th of June. So your, your project basically have to be finished rendering at the end of this month. So this is highly important. And you can choose this option also on your portal site. And we will s switch to the portal site right now. So yeah, if you have any question, you can write to the support. They will help you to um, get this project funding done, this discount. Um, make sure that your project is planned properly for that because you basically get a time schedule for, yeah, you, you have to use this time frame that you get from them. So, yeah, I will now switch to the portal site. The portal site is very important. You can also open the portal site from the HDA. After authentication, you'll be able to directly log into it and this was another website which I will talk about in a couple of seconds and on the portal side you get you, you come basically in the first place to the render manager here you see some of them are red this is okay but you also get direct access to the latest HDAs and you get access to your profile. And this is really important because when you open the pro uh, profile site, you come to the options where you have to choose your economy plan, your service, service plan for your project. So I already have um, changed to the economy mode. This project was rendered in standard mode and you have to choose the um, the CPUs for RenderMan. I uh, use the, the GM48 for this project. I can also switch to the GM1600, uh, um, excuse me. And also for the simulations in case you have one and also for GPU simulations and GPU rendering. So grid markets will offer you also uh, GPU rendering with other render engines. So yeah, you, you have a bunch of options right here. What's really important is that all those changes have to be made before you upload the job. So when you already have uploaded the job, this will have no impact. All the changes that you eventually made make will have no impact. So keep that in mind, that's quite important. Also, when you deal with with very big jobs. So my project had over 24,000 files, pre-cached files, which I wanted to upload to the farm. And at some point, when you create scenes with 20 plus billion polygons polygons in your rendering the um, network speed can lead to longer render times than expected so in case you have a problem with that or when you deal with slower render times on the farm make sure that you have changed um, the option to one machine per job that means not one job at the same time. That means five images will be rendered at the same time or up to five images. So one machine basically can deal with five images. Yeah, you also have to make sure that the relief program is checked in that case, your service plan and so on. Then you be ready to upload your first job. And I will also point out that grid markets is not really expensive. I mean, I have discovered a very nice graphical sheet or multiple sheets on blenderartist.org. 
And there were some guys who did some render form comparisons. And without bloodshed in any form, grid markets is is the black one is somewhere in the middle of most render farms yeah they are on cpu level they are quite cheap their gpu is a bit more expensive but that's totally okay so there are other competitors which are really expensive compared to that so yeah without saying too much uh this is basically the graphic and yeah so when we want to upload now we have to make sure that the frame range is properly set so we will copy this parameter and go to the scene options and here we check this one and put in our frame range basically a uh, reference the frame spec option that you right uh, that you see right here is quite nice because when you want to estimate your costs for the shot on your render time you should render 3 or maybe 5 or maybe 10 test images on the server and then you basically uh, can calculate the entire rendering cost so when you go back to the website, you can go to the overview and calculator. And on the calculator page, you can check what GPU or CPU you are, want to use, your render engine. And here you have two options. The average time frame in my project was something about 30 minutes for for uh, 40 plus layers which is really extraordinary which which is really awesome and yeah the amount the amount of the amount of total images of your sequence and yeah then you can basically estimate the entire cost so of course on render uh, on grid markets the render times will not be that high like on the um, server or on the computer at home, on your workstation. So 30 minutes on the render farm would mean basically one hour or 50 minutes or, yeah, 50 minutes on my computer. And I have a really good one. So a really pimped up machine with a lot of overclocking and so on. So 30 minutes is really, really not the case on the render farm in 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 ninety nine percent of all jobs render jobs so my average render time was something about twenty minutes nineteen minutes or so on let us say eighteen minutes and you would see this is what you can expect that doesn't mean that you really come to this point or to this cost so yeah you can also of course use the g m um cpus so the project will be cost a lot less the difference is quite easy to understand so you basically have different um different um cpus available or different systems basically and they have different price tags so for most stuff that you will do as a average artist you can use the gm 1600 if you want to have it fast or if you have to deal with a lot uh, a larger ram usage you should use the the other um, cpu which has 48 threads and 64 gigabytes of ram if you have any questions for that you can write um, an email to the to to grid markets and they will help you out and they will answer all your questions. They are really kind and if you have a problem with a plugin like with the latest version, um, they will install it for you in less than twenty four hours. If you 
really needed. So they really have a lot of render plugins already. They, by the way, started with Mantra. So Mantra is the most integrated one. And also Renderman is really, really working nicely. So I not had any trouble. I had basically the same experience like with Mantra. And yeah, you should check this out. So I made all this stuff in the portal. So I can go back to Dini. I switch to the start and, uh, or I choose the start and end frames for all this um, stuff. I make sure that we render to an OpenXR image, that we have set up our path exactly. We want to use the denoising function. And yeah, when you want to upload or when you want to render, and denoise, this is highly important, when you want to denoise your um, AUVs, your sublayers, basically. I, I, I will show you uh, this in my, in my scene, in my original scene, which is this one, which is also quite large. So it will take some time to load. I will come back when it's done. So this is basically the final scene I've deactivated some of the stuff right here. When you want to render out um, multiple AUVs with um, Renderman, not just with a farm, but also with Renderman, you have to make sure that you basically have two output uh, displays. So one is your variance file where you have checked the denoise function for cross-frame denoising or single frame, doesn't matter. And a second display where you have this deactivated, you don't need that. And here you add all the LPE functions for all those um, AUVs or beauty passes that you want to output. I will talk about this entire process in the second tutorial, which will hopefully will be distributed next week or maybe in two weeks. I don't know exactly, um, but this is um, this is highly important because Renderman is not able to denoise the AOVs when you have the variance frame on the same display. So create a second display. You can also create multiple ones and have the first one zero have always have to be the variance file with the activated denoise and those can be your AOVs. And for faster denoising I basically, what I've mentioned already, I've basically made a mistake. So my mistake was that I put all those um, AOVs into one EXR file. So the resulting EXR file had a size of about 200 or 300 megabytes per frame. And this is a really big tie, uh, um, data amount for the denoiser um, to be able to denoise. So when you want to do this correctly, you basically name this whatever you like. And then you basically get rid of all those or disable them and so on and only output those or maybe you do this by groups this is this is what i recommend so maybe all the trees and so on and here comes another really important um, part to be able to denoise sublayers or aovs with the console you have to add a tag in front of your um path I chose the diffuse tag 
there are there is a list in the documentation of render man where you can see all those tags and yeah you should use different ones for maybe when you have a specular pass you really should use the specular pass because the denoising will behave differently so this is this is really important so in that case those are the diffuse layers or beauty passes so i use the diffuse tag and the, and, and those tags have to be um, sitting in front of your entire file name because this is your file name or s not file name this is your layer name so and this is wrong so and this itself is the lpe function uh, which also has a mask but i will talk about this like i've said in another tutorial in the second tutorial which will come after that tutorial so this is what you have to keep in mind and when you've done that we can or when you have thought about that if you maybe you need it we can go back to our shot we are back at our shot now our bird and we already did everything to make it possible to upload I also uh, check the generate render disk file in a separate job that means the grid markets render farm will make sure that all file translations and so on will be done in a separate job so the render process or calculation process itself will not be slowed down by data copying operations so I choose this uh, for most of my jobs so, and what we do now is we hit the submit render button. And in that, it will log in. And what we see now is that our, um, um, we have some red um, folders and some green ones. And the red folders basically mean that we have to think about changing our project itself what i um what you see here is i used a uh, environment variable in houdini to access one of the obj files the problem with that is that the render uh, uh, farm at grid markets cannot resolve that path so the only way to get rid of this error line is to use the entire path without any shortcuts so i will close this window again and we'll go to my file loader loader which was i guess somewhere right here okay not really here it was also not here also not there so if you don't find it you can open it again and you can find the reference right here. So we have the object bird master flaum and then file one. So we have to check this one. I guess this this was one of the source objects, so maybe we don't need them. Uh where was it? So here. So check your entire file. So if you don't or if you want to get rid of any problems make sure that you basically submit a finished and optimized render file otherwise you maybe get some error messages like this so this is the obj file and obj files are really really a problem for grid markets don't ever work with obj files for final rendering they are really slow and the servers sometimes really have problems with obj files so if you have this don't wonder if you have any trouble so what you can do is basically get rid of this and now we can try it again it should work and the problems are gone and 
Yeah, what you see right here is this entire structure that you have right here will be uploaded. So grid markets will create a mirrored copy of your entire structure. But of course, not all the files from your desktop, not the entire home directory and not the other files. Grid markets will only make sure that all necessary files are connected correctly, like in your project. This is, this is really nice. And this makes sure that you also get not confused with your own project structure. So yeah, this uh, really should help. And what we see is something like this. This is um, a cached sequence, which is not uploaded yet. So we will come to the right side of this entire um, uploader of this pre-flight manager. And here we have some important stuff to consider. First of all, this row means everything checked right here will be uploaded to the farm. But of course, we also want to download images. So you have to make sure that your render output has the um, the download check mark. Otherwise, the farm will render and will you will not be able to download your images. So you have to make sure that this is checked in case you be busy and so on, really, really check this twice or three times. I missed it one time and it was really bad for me. So, because the entire image process and storing and so on will be fully automatic on the farm, not even, to my knowledge, not even grid markets is able to change or to get your files back. So this is highly important. Here you also have to um, check the long-term storage. So, so when you want to download the images, not directly with the Envoy tool, and when you want to have access over your entire project time, you should check this mark. Of course, there is also um, some time to consider how long you'll be able to store this there but this will make sure that um, your files don't get missing. So we, we have checked this. And the next thing that we need to do is we have to choose a file name or a project name. And we call it BERT. We can give it a label. Maybe the default is our current um, date, but we can name it maybe BERT test one. And there is something quite important. So the project name will not be changed. So let us say you do this first test and your shading went wrong and you already have uploaded 10,000 files or so on and you don't want to re-upload anything because you only have changed the shader or something. As long as you use the same project name, all the files and also the uploaded files on the server, which are a requirement for your render job, will be stored. Though this is, yeah, don't change this if you deal with um, the same project and the same textures and so on. So yeah, in the right um, screen, we will see what we will download. Yeah, this is this is what the the, um, um, what my computer is missing. So here in the job, we can check all the, the stuff also in regard to uh, grid markets with the simulation option. And we hit save and continue. Now we see how large the entire upload size is. We see what we need to upload the caches, all the textures, the BGO files, the HDR, and we see what we want to download. We only want to get the bird turntable. And this is basically the job list. And then we hit go. 
And now grid markets will connect to the Envoy tool. So we have to make sure that the Envoy tool is open at the same time. And then grid markets will start with the upload process. It will take five minutes. So we will wait until this is done basically. So I will pause this until this is done and then I will come back. So the upload process will be finished in a couple of seconds. And when this is done, this window should be closed. Upload completed. And now it's closed. And the next thing that we want to do is we open the manager portal. So here we are. And here we see our submitted job. And right here, the project is uh, in sync mode. That means the render farm will distribute this entire scene to all the render clients. So this will also take some time depending on your economy plan. So. I hope we will see the render process starting right now. The project is synced. So yeah, let us wait for this. I will talk about those red projects right here. So what you see right here is that my render rendered project, um, I, I have split it into multiple chunks and there were some frames um, crashing. This uh, has nothing to do with the render farm itself. This has something to do with um, render man itself. The render farm will take care of this, and the, uh, that all your images will be rendered. So it will automatically restart the job when the render farm will get any error and will restart this job. And yeah, it will finish those missing images. So that's why this um, job is indicated red. Red doesn't mean it's totally crashed. It means there were some problems. So, but yeah, when you have any questions, uh, you can of course check the render logs for each frame. It was right here. I don't have those anymore. And because I already deleted the entire project, so, yeah, and now we wait that this job is starting. The project is already synced, but yeah, I believe currently there are a lot of projects starting on the farm. So I will come back when this project is finished. So it, it was shorter than expected. It only took um, 30 to seconds more and yeah so the job is green that means the job is currently in processing and we can open this job and you see um it's currently rendering and yeah the overall render time of course when we update that we will see more so you have to update that and we will hopefully see some finished images uh, shortly. Currently, this entire project has cost us three cents, which is awesome for four images, five images. So the first two frames are finished. And now when you open the, um, the Envoy tool, you will see the grid markets will start downloading, hopefully now. We're in a couple of seconds. <laughs> we have no turntable, test turntable right now. So it will hopefully start downloading.
but we also can force grid market to download. So we can open this folder structure and this is our entire project, what we have basically uploaded. And currently there are no render frames because maybe they will transfer it right now. So this can take some time. And we can also check the lock, like I've said, from the frame itself. So you will see some more information. We will see if this has worked. So what we see now, the expect, expected rest time. So in 42 minutes, this entire sequence will be finished. And this is what the uh, farm expect that you have to pay to finish the, this entire thing. So you get a, a sequence of 144 images for, for, for less than $2. I mean, one credit is $1. I, I mean, this is, this is, this is really, really affordable. So, and it's also really, really fast. So I hope this will start total files, 59 failed uploaded. Ah, now, now, now you see it. It's, it has, it has received those images from the farm um, to the grid markets network and it already started to download in the background when those images get finished. And hopefully, yeah, we will now have a new folder called bird turntable test. And here you see grid markets is already downloading into your existing structure. And this works perfectly with Renderman. So we can open one of those images right now while the farm is rendering for us, though we can work further on our project. We can maybe start to compose or yeah, check those files. And this is the first thing that I do every time. I check the output. Uh, I activated ACES. And here is our output. And it looks like expected. I mean, this is really fast. A 2K CinemaScope image. So, and now we can do some stuff, funny stuff like that. And your, your system will not block while rendering. So this is the advantage. And every time when I have a commercial project, not just for render man, but for all my rendering operations. And when I have a short deadline, I use grid markets. It really works. And in the past, as some of you uh, know, I use grid markets also for the earth um, shots that I've made for side effects. So yeah, as you can see, those are the project files and I used it. Um, it's highly important when you when you render with Renderman with the current uh, uploaded version to make sure that you use the correct version of Houdini 18, which is the build 391. When you use the latest production build, it can happen that Renderman will not work properly because the supported version for Renderman currently, the highest version is the free uh, 191 for random and 23.3 and you see uh, more um, about this on the random man page yeah it's it's currently downloading and blocking my my computer a bit my network speed so don't wonder so when you want to use Houdini uh, make sure that you use those versions. This is also very important for grid markets.
So if you have any trouble, any problem, any glitches and so on, check this first and then it will, yeah, it will work or not. Or you have explanation why this happened. So, and yeah, we have more images. As you can see, and it works perfectly. So I will run uh, this entire project. Um, did I have opened it twice? Oh, don't need a second one. So and go back to the portal, and here we have it. Oh, it, it will come more affordable, less than one and a half dollar for the entire sequence. And we also, uh, we already have 23% finished. So in 23 minutes, this entire job will be done. Yeah, this is how you submit a job to grid markets. And like I've said, um, it's when you want to deal with denoising and so on, Make sure that you have multiple displays like I've shown to you and check those options, check those pre-flights. Maybe I can show you some um, stuff uh, when, I, when you deal with uh, sh uh, changing shaders. I, I can demonstrate that. We can go right here and we can stop this render process. So we will stop it now. It will um, ask for a reason. So if you have a really big problem with the farm you um, can check the other option when you have any trouble any any stuff that is not your fault the grid markets will pay you back uh, this those are my information so I already uh, did uh, this in the past with the Mars project where I had a lot of trouble uh, um, with GPU rendering not because of the farm, but because of the engine I had used back then. There were a lot of uh, problems because my scenes are usually heavy. So maybe you want to save time, you can do this. So this is really nice. And what is $1 for 144 images? It's it's cheaper than rendering on your computer at home because I, I can only speak about Europe and Germany. In Germany, one hour rendering will cost you, yeah, more than, uh, with uh, all the taxes, more than uh, 60 cents. So when you have a, a big sequence and, and this uh, cost will drop further, um, you, you have two factor, uh, factors to consider. You consume your time, it, it, the time that you cannot use for working, that's why a render farm is quite uh, nice. You will consume energy for just staring at the um, monitor. You will also um, reduce the lifetime of your hardware. Every rendering operation, no matter what, will reduce the lifetime of your CPU, your RAM, your entire system. So all those costs will be saved on a farm and grid markets is in that regard really cheap so that's why i use it and yeah i will stop that now no longer needed terminated and the next thing that we want to do is we change some stuff on the shader so what i do now is i will go into my shading network now I will make this a bit larger. And here is my bird rig. And where I have my shaders here, I have my shaders. And I will, what I can do today, I will change some color right here. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can test this. I will change this in the meantime meantime to the it preview and we'll go back and we'll make this maybe a bit yeah just for testing purpose I will make this red
maybe we can yeah maybe we can emit some light from this in red do this here so yeah it, it, it looks like a mask so maybe we can do this like this so and yeah maybe we can change something on the on the shader here too so yeah so this is exactly what we want and of course I will save it now to another file I will call this GM grid markets and yeah we will make sure that we go back to our original setting and we will call this basically test2 and here test2 underscore and we want to load the um, cache preflight data from the last time we hit this button again and now important heavily important we change this to task 2 and allow submission of cache preflight data so and now we hit the save and continue button you will um, maybe get confused now that um, the uh, uh, uploader will upload the entire project again but this should not happen so when you hit this button it will check your entire project on the server and will check um, if those files are already existing so it will not upload those files it will only upload your changed hip file and now it's gone it's completed so here we have it we go back to the farm and here we have our new job it also should sync a lot faster now so The other thing um, that I mentioned in the tutorial, in early in the tutorial, is when you don't want to download the um, the project with the grid markets envoy automatically in the background, um, you have to close the grid markets job in the background. So you basically go to your um, um, task manager. It's looking in in Linux like this in Linux Mint. And you will go down to Envoy. And here you have the grid markets Envoy and all those tasks. And we don't need that now. So we can end this. So here we have the last one. There are multiple jobs for that. All the Envoy um, stuff is gone. The Envoy tool is closed and it will not download um, it will start downloading when you reopen the envoy tool again so yeah it will start and if you have any question in regard to the grid markets render farm um, you can reach me out um, in our new Render man for Houdini Discord. You can access this quite fast. And yeah, we are learning a Render man together. We are using grid markets. And we deal also, we have also a general, a channel for a general Houdini question. And yeah, also some news channels. And what I like the most is I have basically created an example file section in this Discord where you can have access to the most common question in RenderMan. So you basically can download those files and can learn from them. We also have a description for every file, a short description. And yeah like something like that um, rendering crowds or 
um, using um, sp volume splits to render faster, how to use a lens shader, which is also working on the farm. All those stuff is working on the farm. And yeah, basic setup for AUVs, shadow AUVs. All the other questions, all the other stuff. Um, oh, the job is starting. And it looks like it will take a lot longer. So I will check this now if this is the case. So that's not the case. So it will go down. So yeah, this is everything in regard to grid markets. I highly recommend this. I will um, show you once again the final project. So here we have it. It was really an insane amount of work. Um, leave a comment and maybe a like, maybe not. It's up to you. Um, support the community for both, for grid markets and also for Renderman. Renderman is really, really, in my personal opinion, one of the best engines available. It's really powerful. And yeah, the most powerful thing is that you can combine um, grid markets and Pixar, uh, Pixar's render, uh, render engine. And for that project, it really worked out nicely. So yeah, I highly recommend to use it and leave a comment and um, don't hesitate to watch the second tutorial. Uh, it will follow probably next week. It will cover more about the entire layering process. So it will cover how you can create a reflection, unoccluded pass, how you can export a beauty pass from a specific area you also um, have to or you will learn how you deal with alpha channels because um, those um, aov channels don't come um, with an alpha channel out of the box so you have to use um, the crypto mat um, stuff for that and yeah i will basically upload um, an example file from my shot, from my, from my big shot, from my um, tree shot, but um, I have to delete all the um, um, geometry or most of the geometry because in that project I really bored in some of those assets like the trees, the grass um, textures, the grass meshes and so on. I also uh, downloaded um, uh, stuff like the um, the bench and so on. So this is because of the old plugin, and and so I have to, I sadly have to remove those assets to not um, yeah compromise the licensing and so on. So in the end, it will not uh, change the um, the render settings itself. You have the finished shot, and uh, you will see also some. Um, of the layers in the um, shot breakdown. So it will be easy for you to understand what happened. So the objects will be preserved. So I will not delete any of those objects. I will only delete some of the contents. I, I cannot share them, sorry. Um, but most important, you already get those render settings like for those different passes all those expressions. You basically can go here, uh, go there, and save it as a preset for further use. You can do with those um, LP expressions whatever you want, you can test them. In the next tutorial, I will show you um, what or, yeah, how you work with those um, expressions, uh, how, um, what those um, stuff means, all those letters that you see right here. So I hope this will help you and I hope you will join um, the Discord and yeah, check out Grid Markets. It really helps to it really helps to to have a fast turnaround in your projects also in that time when time is money. So one point uh, that Grid Markets uh, told me is um may there are a lot of questions going on um, if 
if they can shut down the computer when the farm is running. And yeah, indeed, when the farm is running, you can shut down your computer at any time. As long as the upload process is finished, you can do that. You can come back and um, restart your computer when the job is done. You also get an email from Grid Markets when your job is finished. So, yeah, if you have some questions, have a nice day. I see you in the next tutorial.